we shall now talk about sp2 hybridization an advice here move on to sp2 hybridization only once you have clearly understood the sp3 hybridization what is sp2 hybridization we shall try and understand it with a very simple example over here of c2h4 called as ethene in the iupac system or ethylene here if we draw the bond line notation of ethene or ethylene what i will understand here is that there is a double bond between the two carbon atoms so hydrogen 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 so there are four hydrogen atom each carbon atom is attached to two hydrogen atoms but in turn between the two carbon atoms there is a double bond double bond means there will be one sigma and one pi bond always remember there can never be two sigma bonds two or more sigma bonds between any two atoms there can only be one sigma bond between two atoms yes there can be two pi bonds between two atoms and always a sigma bond is formed first followed by a pi bond you cannot just have two pi bonds between two atoms first they will always form a sigma bond that means first they will come together head on overlap and then then they go on to form a pi bond now secondly we also know that when we are talking about a pi bond a pi bond involves the overlap of both the lobes the top and the bottom like we have shown for p orbitals over here when we spoke about hybridization what we found was that there is redistribution of energy so we don't have two lobes over here so in other words when i'm talking about ethene or ethylene i need to leave one p orbital available to form pi bond let's start with the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2px 1 y1 and z with no electrons carbon in the excited state because of the approach of the hydrogen atoms acquires the electronic configuration 1s2 2s1 2px 1 y1 z1 here now they have to come together so one p orbital is left untouched what is taking part in hybridization is just 1s and 2p orbitals so what name can we give to these hybrid orbitals sp2 hybrid orbitals the kind of hybridization is called as sp2 hybridization so in the case of ethene or ethylene there is sp2 hybridization how many sp2 hybrid orbitals will be formed 1 2 3 3 are participating so there will be 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals formed now when 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals are formed again we need to align themselves so there are three bond angles when there are three bond angles we need to arrange them so that they are maximum distance apart from each other so when you have only three bonds how can you arrange themselves at maximum distance apart from each other very simple we will have them at an angle of 120 degrees 1 2 and we have the third one here and this is here so we have 3 at a bond angle of 100 uh, sorry 120 degrees each let us draw this now if you and always remember both the carbon atoms involved in bond formation are undergoing hybridization at their own level so i have carbon this is one hybrid orbital so let me shade it to make the concepts clearer then there is the second hybrid orbital again shading it this is second and this is the third hybrid orbital this is the status of one carbon atom let me draw the second also now here 
sp2 hybrid orbital of one carbon overlaps with the sp2 hybrid orbital of the second carbon atom giving me an sp2 sp2 overlap this is an sp2 hybrid orbital sp2 hybrid orbital they are overlapping head on so this is a sigma overlap this is my second hy sorry second hybrid orbital and this is my third hybrid orbital of the second carbon atom so we have here this one now we have one unpaired electron one unpaired electron one unpaired electron on each of the hybrid orbitals so a hydrogen atom comes there is head on overlap head on overlap mind you hydrogen is not undergoing hybridization it is only carbon which is undergoing hybridization and that too only when it has to undergo bond formation now let us see how many sigma bonds are there sigma 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 and this we already spoke is a sigma bond if you notice there is still one p orbital which has got an unpaired electron so this is my sigma bond here now in each of the carbon atoms there is one p orbital which is unhybridized to differentiate between the unhybridized and the hybrid orbitals i am not going to shade the unhybridized ones so there is no confusion so this is unhybridized you can avoid doing this if you want there is no compulsion for you to shade it is just for clarity now each of these has got an unpaired electron so they undergo what we call as pi bonding where there will be an overlap between the two lobes of the unhybridized p orbital so there is one pi bond now let us see the shape around each of the carbon atoms the bond angle that we have is 120 degrees so around one carbon atom 1 2 and 3 so the shape becomes trigonal planar why planar because it is in the same plane trigonal planar we have bond angle of 120 degrees we have sp2 hybridization how many sigma bonds are there let us total them up 1 2 3 4 and 5 five sigma bonds how many pi bonds there is only one pi bond over here and the type of overlap that is involved now we need to see over here this is an sp2 hybrid orbital this is an s orbital from hydrogen so i have sp2s 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 and sp2s a total of 1 2 3 4 so 4 sp2 s overlaps what is the kind of overlap between the two carbon atoms i have one sp2 sp2 overlap and of course there is one pi bond over here so this should make the concept of sp2 hybridization a little more clearer Gl greater clarity comes when you practice these diagrams yourself go step by step think for yourself you know that there is a pi bond so don't touch one of the p orbitals and then try to draw the structures you will find it much easier sometimes students do get confused don't worry do it a second time do it a third time 
once you go through it you will be able to relate to it and you will be able to explain it and understand it in a better way